Welcome back. Now this presentation will be mostly on kinship because the material on marriage and family is covered decently in your text. The kinship material needs more elaboration. So if you're following, you start at slide 12. Now the kinship uh, material here uh, will involve models that are um, very well um, appreciated in anthropology. But kinship refers, as you can see from this slide, to the relationships found in all societies that are based on either blood or marriage, which is a uh, way of uh, saying it. Um, those people to whom we are related through birth or blood are our consequential, well, no. and those that are related through marriage are affinial uh, relatives. There's another category here uh, called fictive uh, kin, and these are people who are related to those uh, that we are not specifically connected by blood or marriage, but we are connected by organization or some type of other um, institutional um, re redefinition of their relationship to us. So for example, um, a set of relationships uh, that we are most familiar with are like college fraternities and sororities. People call themselves brothers and sisters within those organizations. Um, we might have someone who has been baptized in one uh, religious tradition, and in that tradition, uh, they now have a godparent and a godchild relationship. Again, these people are not necessarily sharing um, marriage connections. So the reality is, is that um, we have uh, many ways of understanding our relationship to others, uh, but fundamentally it's through blood or marriage. Now, I must say to you before I move on to this function of kinship, is that we have a lot of emphasis in American society on uh, biological meaning of kinship. Uh, and this is particularly true when determining legal parenthood. So someone could come out of the um, deep woods after many years and assert their paternity rights. And this is um, um, a process that happens daily. Um, and, and in the United States, people are given great, um, uh, what you might say, connection to the child um, based on biology alone. But if you go to Ecuador, um, you might find a very different idea. Um, there are some subcultural uh, constructs in Ecuador which suggest that, um, that parenthood is created by nurturing and caring for the child over a long period of time. And the notion of nurturing is quite literally defined as feeding or sharing food with the child. So in a sense, it's food that binds parents to children and not necessarily biology. Um, the researcher in 1995, this anthropologist Wisemantle said that, quote, those who eat together in the same household share the same flesh. He sort of made that distinction uh, clear uh, about how social parenthood is given a higher priority than biological parenthood. So we cannot take our uh, uh, American uh, construct to be true around the, um, the world. Now, one of the things that we need to look at is the function of kinship in that it is vertical, that is kinship provides social continuity by binding people um, to a number of successive generations. 
and kinship systems are most directly uh, involved with the passing of education, tradition, property, political office in these societies uh, from one generation to the next. Second, kinship systems tend to solidify or tie together a society horizontally, that is across a generation, through the process of marriage. Um, the horizontal function uh, of kinship is best illustrated by um, the case of a king in um, Africa who solidified his entire kingdom, uh, composed of approximately half a million people, by taking a wife from virtually every non-royal uh, lineage in the country. So you get the idea, the vertical and horizontal has something of a binding nature that a kinship structure allows. Um, moving forward, we can now talk about um, the type of descent groups. So generally speaking, there are two ways to understand kinship. One is unilineal, that is you trace the ancestry either through mother or father's line, not both, or cognathic or bilateral, bilateral descent. And that's where the um, descent is um, both through the mother's side and the father's side. Unilineal descent um, patterns, um, as referenced before, are, are through one line or the other. So they can be patrilineal or they can be matrilineal. That is patrilineal, um, the, the children trace their heritage or, or descent uh, through the father's group. Matrilineal, the children ch trace their descent through the mother's group. There is no language here for um, the idea of patriarchal. That is not what we're talking about when we talk about patrilineal. That's something entirely different. So now when we talk about unilineal descent patterns, you gotta remember 60% of all kinship systems found in the world are based on a unilineal pattern. So um, our system is by uh, lateral. Um, uh, so it, it's really um, uh, not the majority of the way people are organized uh, through um, kin. Um, and some people say that unilineal descent is very uh, adaptive because it's clear cut and um, um, straightforward. Uh, it's unambiguous about how you're connected. Um, now, patrilineal descent groups um, are far more common than matrilineal, and you could see them across uh, a range of societies. You We'll see this in Native American groups, uh, traditional um, East African farmers and pastoralists. You'll see this in India. You'll see this in Papua New Guinea. And of course, the more um, famous of, of this is the traditional Chinese uh, structure of, of patrilineage. Um, the, um, the, the, the word here, uh, for us is to look at, now I want to show you here, the uh, triangles are males and the females are circles. And you can see it starts with a founder. Um, and <clears throat> in um, um, Chinese society, for example, it's not uncommon for these uh, patrilineal groups to be able to trace their ancestor, the founder, back 17, 18 generations. But you can see how um, the founder um, uh, has um, three um, offspring, a, a, a girl and two boys. Um, the um, one marries, you can see, um, and uh, those uh, in that marriage um, are now descended from the male line. And as we go down, everything will be defined 
through the patrilineal lineage, or in this case, the male line. The matrilineal is exactly the opposite. You could see uh, starting in the top here where um, you see the first generation um, with the females now um, being defined as the uh, major structure in the um, uh, def definition of the patrilineal, matrilineal group. Now there are types of unilineal groups, uh, lineages, uh, and these are groups that are at least, um, I would say, uh, 10 generations in definition. Um, they go back 10 generations in depth. Um, and you can trace your ancestry uh, back step by step to a common founder. Um, so when descent is tra traced through the male line, the groups are known as patrilineages. Now, when they're traced through the female, I'm repeating myself, they are known as matrilineages. Now, in lineages, you're going to get segmentation. And th these are um, uh, the topics of both books and, and films, uh, where within that uh, 10 generations, one if we're talking about a patrilineage line, one of the brothers um, uh, might not be so happy with the arrangement and breaks off into their own separate lineage. Um, this is called a secondary lineage and maybe even a tertiary lineage. Um, the reality is, is that it all gets traced back by 10 generations. Now, what is a clan? Another type of unilineal descent group is the clan, and the clan is comprised of 10 or more generations whose members believe they're all related, but they're unable, and this is the issue here, they're unable to trace their genealogical connections step by step. An interesting story um, is one of Alex Haley, who uh, tried, an African-American man, who tried to form a group to walk in the St. Patrick's Day Parade in New York City. This is many, many decades ago. He um, was denied a permit. He claimed that um, as a son of uh, multiple generations of people who had been held in slavery, that the, uh, uh, the, the marriages and lack of marriage uh, of uh, slaveholders to their slaves um, actually um, made some of his relatives of Irish descent. And therefore, as far as he was concerned, he was part Irish. Um, his permit was not permitted, but he did make a point. Uh, factories are basically an order of uh, magnitude. And basically, uh, their unilineal descents composed of two or more clans. And we can leave it at that. Now, uh, cognathic uh, descent patterns um, are non-lineal um, descent groups. And they're basically understood. I'm only going to go through a couple here. Uh, ambilineal and bilateral. Um, and here we have the remaining 40% of the world societies have kinship groups that are non-lineal, cognathic, and um, these um, these are be, these are groups that are able to classify themselves uh, by descent um, on um, both uh, through both sides, mother and father. So let's look at ambilineal first. Um, in these societies, the practice of ambilineal descent. Parents have a choice of affiliating their children with either kinship group. So unlike unilineal, which restricts one's membership to either the mother or father's group, ambilineal systems are more flexible because they allow for the individual choice concerning group affiliation. And the range of choice varies from one ambilineal, ambilineal system to another. So in some cases, the parents are expected to choose the group with which the children will eventually affiliate. 
and other systems allow the individual to move continuously through life from one group to the other. Um, the next would be bilateral, and this is what we practice here uh, in this society. Um, a person is related equally to both the mother and father's side of the family, and the bilateral, bilateral system tends to be symmetrical to the extent to what happens on one side of the kinship diagram uh, or, or the other. So, in other words, you're going to see that everybody's labeled, whether they're from your mother's side or father's side, and they're siblings of your mother or father, they're all labeled uncle. They don't have a specific label. Um, so now I want to talk to you uh, about parallel and cross cousins. Uh, the definitions are uh, clearly stated here. I'll just repeat them. Children, parallel children of one's mother's sister and father's brother cross cousin, children of one's mother's brother and father's sister. Uh, these uh, uh, concepts will come up um, a little later. Now, this is what I really wanted to focus on um, uh, more exhaustively, and that is the six systems of classification. Um, every society has a coherent system of labeling various type of kin. And in any given system, certain um, members of kin are grouped together under a single category, whereas others are separated into distinct categories. So as I mentioned earlier in our own society, we group together under the general heading, heading of aunt, for example, our mother's sisters, our father's sisters, um, etc. So you get the idea. Similarly, when we lump together under the heading of uncle, uh, our father's brothers or our mother's brothers, um, uh, you can see that um, at this um, a system is very, um, very fluid. So in contrast, uh, we have societies that have separate terms for eight, all eight categories of kin that you know any any kind of way we could talk about father's brother or mother's brother or father's sister or father and um a sister's husband the in other systems some of these every single one of those classifications has a different label in their respective language um so Ours is more fluid, as I mentioned to you, in the sense that it is um, um, everyone is an uncle or an aunt. And in other places, each one of these relationships, um, the mother's sister's uh, mother sister has a very distinct label. And, and so when we, you have that kind of distinction, you know that those people have a special relationship to ego. So the first system. Uh, I want to talk to, and you can see here that there are six broad categories um, of classification, is the Eskimo system, uh, because this is the one that we are related to. Eskimo is really a derogatory term, means raw meat eater. Um, but the Eskimo system, uh, let's call it Inuit system, um, is found in approximately one-tenth of the world societies, and it's a kinship structure. Uh, that is fundamentally based in or associated with bilateral descent. And the major feature of this system is that it emphasizes the nuclear family by separate terms, such as mother, father, sister, brother, that are not used outside the family. Beside the nuclear family, many other relatives, aunts, uncles, cousins, are lumped together. And this emphasis on the nuclear family is related to the fact that societies using this system lack large descent groups, such as lineages or, and clans. Uh, in American life, uh, people would be hard pressed to go back four generations. Um, also, uh, this system is most likely um, to be found where economic conditions favor an independent nuclear family. So again, this is why here in this system it's very easy for someone to have a fictive relationship with ego. This is how you read these charts from ego up. Um, and you can see here we're using um, 
the vocabulary of aunt and uncle because um, that's what we use here and cousin so you can see uh, from ego uh, the um, the triangle there at the base uh, all people from his mother's side and his father's side uh, that are of his generation are all called cousins we're going to see other systems where each of these cousins here each have a different label um, we're also going to see that the father's um, in this case the the, the father's uh, brother is an uncle the father's brother got married and that's an aunt the father's sister is also an aunt as is her husband who is um, also um, an uncle so you could see here that these labels are lumped and they're fluid meaning that um, this is where fictive relationships come in you might have a close family friend that's been a neighbor or someone that um, one of your parents has known for 20 30 40 years and they are uh, regular uh, participants in family life they come to holiday celebrations and over the years they might have picked up the the fictive term uncle so it's uncle Bob and it's got nothing to do with the fact that he is um, uh, your father's brother or your mother's brother. It's just that he is a family friend and no one's going to be worried too much because we use the word uncle very generously. All right, so moving on, the Hawaiian system uh, is found in approximately a third of the societies in the uh, world and the Hawaiian system uses a single term for all relatives of the same sex so, and generation so to illustrate uh, a person's father father's brother and mother's brother are all referred to by the single term father okay so I'll repeat that the, the, the um, person's father father's brother and mother's brother are all referred to the single term father so from ego standpoint he's got a lot of parents here and in ego's generation the only distinction is one based on sex so that male cousins are equated with brothers and female cousins are equated with sisters um, now this is a system the Hawaiian system uses the least number of terms and is associated with ambilineal descent so you're going to see this in ambilineal descent which permits a person to affiliate with either the mother or the father's kin um, the Hawaiian system is found in systems that truly submerge the nuclear family into larger kin group to the extent that nuclear family members are roughly equivalent in importance to more um, distant kin now why would this be sensible so some anthropologists have speculated that we have this because uh, in this structure let's just say there was natural calamity in um, Hawaii and um, uh, egos um, biological mother and father were unfortunately killed by a um, storm uh, that came through uh, ego would never be left as an orphan ego would have um, other people who he could call father or mother also um, if some of his biological siblings um, did not survive such a tragedy he would also have brothers and sisters uh, that we would ordinarily define as cousin uh, they would be his brother and sister so in this case ego never loses his family now here's the other interesting thing um, this involves a sports metaphor uh, this was um, or, or a story uh, this uh, is a true story about uh, a University of California coach going to Hawaiian high schools to recruit football players and um, uh, he found uh, uh, a few suitable candidates and one in particular he really wanted um, to join his team uh, with scholarship etc um, the high school student refused adamantly he said um, 
I'm going to go to the University of Hawaii and I'm going to play with my brothers. And um, the coach took this as a, uh, uh, a kind of a generic statement. And he, he said, um, well, you know, you'll make good friendships um, and, you know, they, 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 and these friendships will be very close and you might well call them your brother um, on the team. However, he said, no, 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 I, these are, these are going to be my brothers. And the coach really did not understand that he literally uh, anticipated that some of um, what, the people that we would call cousins would um, be on the football team. Uh, but in this system, they were labeled brothers and he would actually be playing with his brothers. Um, in this case, he never went to California to play. Um, another version is the Iroquois or Iroquois system. Um, in this system, um, Ego's father and father's brother are called by the same term. Now, we're not labeling this. You're just seeing father, mother. And you read this, these charts up from Ego and then you read them up. Um, and these are very simple um, uh, genealogical charts because they're only a couple of generations. But um, in, um, for example, if you were looking at um, the traditional Chinese, um, <clears throat> you could go back 18 generations and uh, they get very involved, particularly with those segmentations. Um, so Ego's father and father's brother are called by the same term. And Ego's mother's brother is called by a different term. Likewise, Ego's mother and mother's sister are lumped together under one term. And a different term is used for Ego's father's sister. So what we have is a basic distinction of classification is made between the sex of one's parents' siblings. That is, the mother's brothers and sisters and father's brothers and sisters. You can see here within Ego's own generation, Ego's own siblings are given the same term as parallel cousins. Remember that concept? These are children of one's mother's sister or father's brother. And a different term is used for cross cousins. That is children of one's mother's brother or father's sister. So the, terminal, uh, the terminological distinction made between uh, cross and parallel cousins is quite logical here, given the distinction made between the siblings of Ego's parents. And this system emphasizes the importance of a unilineal descent group by distinguishing between members of one's own lineage and those belonging to other lineages. All right, so that is the discussion of the Iroquois. Now on to the Omaha. Um, and again, the, these labels are uh, given in reference to where they were first seen. So whereas the Iroquois system reflected the importance of unilineal descent group, the Omaha system is more specific in that it emphasizes patrilineage. All right, so Iroquois is more general unilineal, and now this emphasizes patrilineal descent. And under this system, Ego's father and father's brother are called the same term. You could see that. Um, and Ego's mother and mother's sister are also called the same term. So equivalent terms are used for both parallel cousins and siblings, but separate terms are used for cross cousins. And this pattern uh, if you look at it very carefully, is internally consistent because if ego, because if ego calls some men and women father and mother, it will follow that ego should also call their children brothers and sister. On the mother's side of the family, there is a merging of generations, and you will see this. And where there's a merging, there's less importance to that side. In other words, similar terms are used for people in different generations. Because in our own um, Eskimo system, um, always has, you always use separate terms for people in different generations, the type of generation merging found in the Omaha system could be very strange looking to us. Um, to illustrate this merging of generations, you, you'll see 
on the chart that all men, regardless of age or generation, who are part of Ego's mother's patrilineage, are also called mother's brother. This, this can be seen um, in the case here of, of Ego's mother's brother, um, and Ego's mother's brother's son. Uh, we'll also see in addition similar terms are used for Ego's mother, mother's sister, and mother's brother's daughter. So that merging of generation does not occur on Ego's father's side as a reflection of the greater importance of the father's patrial lineage. So that is Ego's father and father's brothers are lumped together as a separate category from other males in the patrial lineage because the paternal uncles have the same level of authority over Ego as does Ego's biological father. And this lumping together of several generations on the mother's side, again, as I stressed before, is indicative of the fact that Ego's connection to his mother's lineage is less important than to his father's lineage. All right, now, the, the next group is called the Crow, uh, and by concentrating on matrilineal rather than patrilineal, the Crow system is basically the mirror of the Omaha system. So it's very similar in that both use terms for Ego's father and father's brother, and Ego's mother and mother's sister, and Ego's siblings and parallel cousins, but because of its less important nature, the father side of the family merges generations, okay? That is, all males on the father's line, regardless of generation, are combined under a single term. So, however, on Ego's mother's side of the family, which is important descent group, generational distinctions are recognized. So it's just the reverse of the Omaha system. Um, is the Sudanese system, which is named after a region in Africa where it is found, is most descriptive, that is most particularistic. And this is because it makes the largest numbers of terminological distinctions. So under this system, separate terms are actually used for mother's brother, mother's sister, father's brother, and father's sister, as well as their male and female children. And so you could see that Ego has eight different types of first cousins. This is a highly precise system, which is generally associated with patrilineal descent, and is found in some societies that have the considerable differences in wealth, occupation, and social status. Um, and a possible explanation is that the Sudanese system permits the recognition of socioeconomic differences. So another way, way of putting it is that ego has a very direct relationship with each one of these people that we would define as cousins, um, and they're very unique to him by their definition. And so let's just say someone does very well. Uh, he's in a very good position because of the unique relationship he has had to maybe say, listen, um, maybe you could help me out with a little loan. Okay, so um, this will conclude the discussion of kinship. And thank you so much for your attention.